I'm uh, part of uh, a, a group that uh, has done some lengthy investigations on the uh, medication teraflutamide or Abagio uh, and uh, have been involved with its, its development since 2001. Abagio teraflutamide is a drug that is being used for the treatment of relapsing forms of multiple sclerosis. Uh, and it is uh, indicated for the use of reducing relapses, slowing disability, and, and uh, reducing uh, MRI activity. And yeah, we did the very first phase two trial, which uh, actually uh, had a number of patients that, believe it or not, have been followed for the last 13 years. And so one of the things that we've been reporting on at this meeting is, in fact, the 12-year follow-up of uh, most of that cohort that it can still be obtained and the information that we have on it. So this is uh, information concerning the durability of the response to uh, teraflunamide. Also, uh, a big one is safety. Uh, it, are there any safety signals in people who have taken this drug for more than a decade that did not appear in the registry phase three two-year trials which were placebo controlled. And I think the, the message is that uh, in those patients who've had an early response, they maintain the response in as long as 12 years with uh, very low relapse numbers uh, and uh, no significant change on their disability. Uh, and more importantly, no delayed safety issues whatsoever. It's a single daily dose uh, of medicine uh, that uh, is used, uh, there's no ramp up for it. You start on the first day with the, with the full dose. There are two doses licensed in the United States. Uh, this is the only country in the world that has two doses. Uh, most of the countries uh, recognize that the 14 milligram dose, the large dose, is in fact the most effective one and that has come out of every single one of the trials and uh, we're not an advocate of the lower dose. Well, the, the efficacy is measured by, I think, a number of parameters. Uh, the FDA forces everyone to look at one for the purposes of registry, which is relapse rate reduction. Uh, but uh, we, we look at a, a group of, uh, of, of measures. Uh, the, the most important one we're trying to get at, of course, is disability. Uh, and this is the only product that is shown consistent effects on disability. There are at least two other oral medicines on the market. Neither of them showed consistency in, in slowing disability progression. In one study they did, and in another study they did not. So the, the effects on relapse rate are mirrored by uh, effects on slowing progression, as well as uh, significant effects at reducing MRI activity. So we believe in the relapsing forms of MS category that a lot of progression is actually being uh, pushed by attacks that leave deficits behind. So that this accumulated deficit is probably the reason why patients start to get worse. Given the fact that we think that severity of relapse is driving progression, uh, we were pretty confident that if we looked at severe attacks, those requiring hospitalization, that's a pretty bad attack. Um, often the use of steroids is reserved for more severe episodes. So as a surrogate for severe attacks, we looked at that. And we looked at attacks that changed the disability scale and didn't have it revert to the pre-attack status. So these are attacks that have left behind some deficit. And in every one of those, when we look at that, the severity of uh, attacks was significantly reduced by the 14 milligram dose of teraflutamide. Uh, in fact, if you look at it in comparison to one of the other orals, uh, one of its main competitors being dimethyl fumarate, it was significantly better at reducing severe attacks and probably that is the reason why we're seeing consistent effects on disability whereas we did not see that with dimethyl fumarate.